All right, I just started the recording. Uh, welcome everyone to the Tuesday, June 11th, 2019 Working Group Component Standard Meeting. Um, let me take a look at the agenda here and see here, and I can share my screen as well. Okay, so we've got a couple things. Um, Ross, is that yours, the Cube Controller Manager stuff and Cube Proxy? Uh, no, only the Cube Proxy. Only the Cube Proxy. All right, let's start. Lay, is that your Cube Controller Manager? Um, I literally just copied and pasted it from last week. I didn't do any work in this area um, <laughs> since I was out. Okay. But, you uh, want to skip it, or is there anything you want to talk about? I uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that it was on there uh, to kind of. I know Lucas and Stefan were pushing that work, and uh, I figured we should go see if there are any comments uh, in here. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, if there if there are any comments on this, it's just worth noting. That this needs to be talked about. Uh, I don't think there's anything. Uh, yeah, so it looks like legit came in here last two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, this is all normal stuff. This is uh, the stuff Lucas was talking about. Before. Yeah. Okay, yeah. For some background, Jason, um, the Kube Controller Manager uh, is a parent component config to many other component configs. And so Lucas and Stefan at KubeCon uh, created a proposal to kind of scaffold the, the serialization uh, and deserialization of, uh, of the Kube Controller Manager component config. And they're doing that with a type that wraps the bytes. Um, and they're also doing some interesting API group kind stuff with the names of the keys. Uh, so if you're interested in this area, um, this is definitely a place where we've been lacking um, some some actual technical input and like code. Um, so this was brought up last week, and uh, I haven't taken much more time to look at it, but there's no POC code. Ross, did you want to uh, move on talking about Kuproxy? Yeah, if you're uh, finished with uh, the control manager. Yeah, I didn't have much to add there. So, so OK. Uh, my idea with uh, this is just to like start with a simple proposal with a few like goals, uh, and uh, like my main goal from uh, mostly from my QBDM based uh, perspective from the Cube Proxy configuration is uh, basically to preserve uh, the way configuration is uh, handled in the Cube Proxy, so not to narrow it down to a uh, uh, config map or something like this. Just provide uh, some files with uh, YAML documents in them and uh, have the Kube proxy read the configuration from them. Uh, so users should not be restricted to using config map, but the uh, config map should be made available to them. And uh, some, like, for example, on the on Windows nodes, uh, it may actually be quite difficult to access a config map uh, simply because Kube Proxy is uh, running um, as a normal Windows service. And uh, another thing is that uh, based on Windows hosts and uh, Linux based hosts, uh, we tend to have a couple of distinctive configurations and a small shared core between those configurations. So uh, we need to basically allow for these configurations to be structured in a way to like, not, not make it possible for users to uh, 
have a total mess of the configuration easily. So for example, uh, the like the the address range, the, the cellular address addresses are like uh, shared between uh, both Windows and uh, Linux uh, hosts. And uh, if they live in a couple of like different config maps or different configuration files, they can actually uh, become messed up. So my idea is to just provide a single YAML document for a cluster-wide configuration that uh, is going to contain sections for both Linux and Windows-based hosts and both the shared uh, settings between both Linux and Windows-based hosts. So uh, depending on the uh, actual host operating system, the Q proxy is going to look into the specific uh, key. And Kube proxy will do that by introspecting the host? Yeah, basically it will know what's the, the host operating system. So if it's Linux, it will look under the Linux key. And if it's Windows, it will look under the Windows key. Yeah, that's just, you could go, go provides standard tooling to check the, the OS, so. That's yeah, like I mean, it'll have a, a different image because um, it'll be a different build, but. Uh, Yeah, so that's the that's one of the ideas, and the, the other idea is that uh, basically there are host specific uh, settings such as the host name overrides, the path to the config file, and bind address overrides and stuff like that. And uh, these clearly do not belong to a cluster wide shared uh, configuration. So uh, my proposal is to actually split the current uh, configuration into a couple of uh, uh, kinds. So one is the uh, node or uh, host configuration, or you name it. And uh, the other one is the cluster or shared or whatever uh, configuration that is going to be cluster wide. And so this would be a nicer interface than our like system D override files that we like have to hack around right now. Well, presumably, you get uh, like a couple of YAML documents uh, to possibly mess up with. Uh, hopefully, one of them will live in a like config map or some other place uh, that's shared in the cluster, and QProxy will access it from there. Uh, and the other one is going to be prepared uh, like in some other way, be it by an its container or uh, by some third party tool. Uh, but it's going to contain the uh, host on the configuration. So the idea is that uh, from QProxy's perspective, we're not actually interested in how we got those YAML documents, uh, but we need them provided on the command line and uh, just stuff on that. And uh, possibly they should uh, live in like a couple of different YAML files or uh, some users may actually want to, to combine them in a single YAML file. So probably allowing for a couple of uh, minus minus config options uh, at the command line uh, is going to be a good idea. Yeah, there's yeah. probably going to be a, a, I wouldn't, well, that's maybe a, an API design discussion for the future on whether to put, you know, all the paths inside of QProxy config um, I think we have we have the same discussion that's going to happen on the kubelet side, right? Like, should the cube config path be in the cube kubelet config uh, structure or not? Um, there's arguments for either side of that. Um, there's the the argument for putting it in there would be that look, the entirety of the kubelet's API should ideally be versioned and contained in this standard object, and that path is in fact part of that API. Um, to configure in the keylet, right? And then the, the argument against it might be like, we might want some top level things to sort of be distinct on the command line. Um, and I'm not, I'm not really sure which of those should win. Um, yeah, I think that we actually have some, quite some time to uh, figure this out, simply because I think that the, the, this step of uh, splitting the kinds 
uh, should be actually done as probably one of the last steps prior to going to beta. So my proposal is to actually yeah, maybe I you know the yeah I think maybe yeah as one of the last steps it would be good we it would be good to first get a representation of all the all the you know pre-existing options in your your sort of monolithic config structure and then figure out how to split them into the kinds I think there's kind of like three three big big uh, like sort of points that I'm noticing in this this whole thread, which is, you know, first of all, the we want to just do that that solution of splitting into a sort of a local and a remote config object, um, so that things like hostname override and node IP and, and whatever else, anything that really is totally local to an instance and can't be sort of shared between multiple can just be set locally. Um, and and that way that doesn't impede your ability to share a config object across you know a whole pool of resources and then and so so that's point one which is that we want to split into this local and remote config objects um, and I think I'm okay with that that solution has been brought up before and it's just nobody's done it um, then the other uh, thing is this question of platform specific configuration and what are the guidelines around how to structure that and I th I wrote a doc like last year that tried to think about this and think about sort of in terms of, okay, we're going to come up with some structure and guidelines and, you know, what are our APIs going to look like over time as we add stuff to them under different sets of guidelines. Um, I took a really strict approach to grading them in this doc and sort of determined like we just want a top level discriminated union for everything, but then Tim Hawken kind of came back and said, hey, look, there's some heuristics you could use to, to do this a little better, and it should pr be pretty obvious what things are shared. So I think as far as, I mean, feel free to take a look at this doc, which is linked in the comments on uh, Ross's doc. Um, but I think the, the solution here is probably to have like some top level shared, you know, common across all platform things, and you know, then a, a substructure for each platform that you can set, um, as Ross kind of suggested. So I think those those two approaches I'm happy with. Um, then the other thing I, I really want us to talk about is like we keep saying we're going to have this cluster wide object, and then the the two things that come to mind when I hear that are a there's also this whole cluster API thing going on. Um, which is also talking about cluster-wide objects, and like we should probably talk to them and see see where this fits there. And then also because cube proxy and like also Kubelet and a lot of these component config things are node-level components, and I'm specifically talking about cube proxy here. You know, is and I know cube proxy does de depend on some cluster-wide networking configuration, but the question is because Nodes are often configured as pools of resources, and and I'll apply like this configuration to that pool. Does it make really make sense to describe this as a cluster wide thing, or should we be thinking more in terms of a pool wide thing? In the case of Kube Proxy, we're dealing with the daemon set, and like it's a config map. Um, but I suppose we could be registering CRDs. Mm. Uh, I I think you're accurate when describing that working with pools of nodes is more accurate. Yeah. Yeah, that's also a good point. So a lot of people deploy Q proxy as a daemon set now. Although I think I don't think all providers do that. Like I think GKE still runs it as a static pod, so it's really configured at a pool level instead of the sort of cluster-wide approach. I think GKE wants to move to using a daemon set, but there, there may be blockers to that on our side. So anyway, those, those questions are recorded. <laughs> um, but Ross, does that make sense? Yeah, it, it actually makes sense. Uh, so basically, uh, what I did here is uh, like a mirror proposal of uh, what we were already doing in Kubeadian. So I was thinking in terms of uh, well, daemon set and uh, 
like uh, from Kubadian's perspective, the, the, the cluster configuration is uh, like uh, just this cluster with this specific control pane. So I was not thinking in terms of uh, pools of machines or stuff like that. But uh, like, uh, yeah, I think that uh, probably Jason can uh, show us some perspective from uh, the pool of machine perspective, like cluster API stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, I think it's, uh, I think that the cluster configuration for this is kind of okay. Uh, we can name it shared configuration or whatever. Like it's shared between different instances. It's not like uh, bound to the term cluster. Mm -hmm. One thing, one one convention I had thought of when I was, I was working on the Qubit config stuff is more, you know, call the shareable one just straight up Qubit configuration, and then call the local one like local qubit configuration or qubit local configuration um, to make that distinction. Because we should, you know, I, wanna, I want us to kind of focus on like the good APIs are the ones that can sort of lift to higher levels. And um, sort of be used in a lot of flexible ways. So like if I, if I have a qubit configuration Ideally, I can just throw it at a cubelet, and you know it should mostly work. Um, and I should be able to scale to that configuration across multiple cubelets or multiple pools of cubelets uh, without changing it, as long as it was already correct for my environment. Um, and the things that impede that are are mostly these sort of local um, paths and and like the local IP has is you can only set one of those, you know, per instance of the thing. So you can't actually share, obviously share an IP across multiple cubelets. Um, so basically making, making our APIs higher level so that they're easier to work with and then keeping that sort of lower level local stuff in the local configuration. And if, we, if they're high level enough, uh, we might be able to just call it cube proxy configuration at that high level. Um, is one other thought. Yeah, I know Cube Proxy gets a little ugly, especially when you talk about uh, some of the flags that need to get passed in to avoid um, hairpinning and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I know in the past we've had to plumb through and override on the daemon set level, you know, the, the host name or the IP address for the local instance. And I suspect, at least for the foreseeable future, there'll still be instances where we're going to need to do that as yeah. well. Yeah, and if we need, if we need, that's configured through the daemon set API. I guess there's there's a way to do that. You just well, use the downward API to plumb to like set the flag. Well, so in the past, like originally, the way we hacked around this was using an init container and basically taking the daemon set, using it as like a template and then modifying it. Um, that was really ugly and, and not something that we wanted to stick with. And I know that something's been put in place since then, but I'm not exactly sure what it is to try to work around that. I see. Um, it, it's one of the reasons why we wanted to have like a preference for uh, being able to use uh, config flags to override kind of like those types of things for the config, uh, because that seemed like a natural way to, uh, to be able to handle it, because then you could use the downward API to kind of fill in kind of the host name or IP address type of thing. Yeah, I wonder if it would be, we, and we've, we talked about that in a few meetings ago of, of either generating flags that match the config or, you know, which I was, I was kind of against because I just, that seems over complicated to me. Um, but one option might be maybe, you know, a flag that lets you set some arbitrary JSON on the command line that you could paper over the config with. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we ever, like, when we requested it, it was never meant that we would have all of the options available, just, you know, things that would make sense on a per host kind of specific basis, because that was the actual. Yeah, 
there's a, I totally agree that there's a huge UX problem with config right now versus flag where, where it's a regression to go to config because you can't really leverage things like the downward API or, you know, or whatever. I mean, maybe you could mount it and then run some bash in your pod config to set the file before your container runs, but it's really ugly, like you said. So, yeah, um, so, um, yeah I totally agree. It'd be good to have some kind of templating solution or, or something to fill that gap with the downward API. Uh, as far as like configuring node pools here goes, uh, and kind of talking about downward API and domains and IPs, uh, when you're considering a node pool, like the domain uh, or the construction uh, by which the host names are created, uh, the most generic and safe thing you can do is make that per node, but really like that's that's gonna be a pattern that's the same across all nodes in the pool uh, from a pragmatic sense, um, which makes it quite irritating, you know, to use as an operator uh, because then you have to add this Kubernetes specific platform stuff to your node provisioning. I also left a comment uh, in our meeting notes uh, kind of highlighting how annoying uh, how difficult it is to do interface selection uh, with like basically anything uh, where you're trying to get an IP uh, for binding. And um, I think like there's a lot of improvement that we can do here. This is a higher order need when talking about component config because we, we have a lot of basic stuff we need to handle first. But I think it should inform our decisions uh, I would like to be able to put, you know, like ENS 10 P3 into a node pool specific config and then like have kube proxy bind to that address, right? And to be able to specify whether or not it's IPv4 or IPv6 without having to know in advance, especially in advance or at, you know, at dynamic node provisioning time, like placing a file somewhere on disk like where that IP address has to be put into some special place through Kubernetes in order to be able to read it. Yeah, and that's another another challenge as well. So like a, it, a, a library for host name generation uh, and for interface selection that supports interface names and whether or not it's IPv4 or v6, like these simple kind of decisions like having a central place for that uh, that we can retrofit into existing components and encourage other components to use in the future sounds like the right move to me and does sound like a component config concern. Well, the other complication there too is that for different use cases, you may want to target different interfaces as well. Yes, that sounds to me like a node pool thing though. Well, it might not just be a node pool thing. Um, one of the use cases that I've heard very frequently in the past is wanting to, um, you know, separate like ingress, egress traffic, you know, outside of the cluster from uh, like intra-cluster communication and even trying to segregate kind of uh, storage uh, interfaces from, mm -hmm. you know, regular networking config. Yes, I, I believe that having these libraries could make that stuff easier because then the components and the configuration sections necessary to make those differentiations uh, would be easier to work with uh, at a node pool level. But maybe I'm not hearing you. I think I'm hearing you. No, I think that's right. I, I thought you were saying make the selection on which interface to use at a node pool level rather than um, you know, I, I would think that I, I, as an operator, would want that to be possible, um, as opposed to jumping into cloud init or whatever and trying to drop files on a system that are mounted in the right place. Yeah. It's been a long time since I really looked at how Kube Proxy works internally. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, if with the multiple interface thing, if it would make sense to have it yeah. affect that. Sort of the thing that I linked is actually uh, the kubelet configuration overrides. Um, yeah. But yeah, anything that binds to an address uh, and is trying to like look for the API server IP and all that, like it's, it gets really buggy when there's more than one interface. 
which makes things like what Jason is describing just really hard to work with because you have to like write bash that's not going to fail more or less. Uh, either that or you have to make sure that you have distinct DNS names on different interfaces and you fall back to using trying to use host names to manage that. Yeah, and a lot of things don't support using the host names. Um, yeah. Like you, you need to give the IPs to the kubelet from my understanding. You can't bind to something else. Although if it if you can do that, then I'm not sure that it's documented well enough. I'm not sure. So um, anyway, the, yeah, that was just something I wanted to bring up because it's a config concern that uh, irritates me. We are at the end of our time. Do we have a separate meeting block for this? No, we're we're about at the end of our time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing I I was going to bring up was just when it comes to add-ons and component config, right? There's some higher order needs uh, with regard to serializing and like not having an API server yet, maybe. So, but uh, we can talk about that next week. Sounds good. Yeah, put it on the agenda, please. Yep. Um, I'll move it over there. Ross, if you want to write this up into a cap, um, kind of like take the comments into account, that would be awesome if you're planning on working on this. Yeah, I'll actually try to put up a cap uh, tomorrow or uh, on Thursday and submit it. And uh, I'm planning on working on this one for the next time, at least. Feel free to ping me for review and comments on that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, superb. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye.